Today I'm going to show you how to build a cradled artist panel that's superior to any you can buy off the shelf. We'll be making our own art panels using inexpensive materials found at any of the big box stores. Hi, I'm Billy Rise. I've been a professional artist and painter for more than a decade. Along the way I've discovered some tips and tricks that have helped me take a creative hobby and turn it into a professional career. And I'd like to share some of that knowledge with you. So that maybe you'll be inspired, to do the same. Let's start with some of the basic materials needed to follow along. Here I'm going to be using some poplar 1x2 boards cut to a final size of 16 inches and some 1 8 inch plywood commonly referred to as Luan. Using a 90 degree sled, set your table saw blade height to no more than 1 8 of an inch proud of the stock. Each angle side of your sled should be marked so that you'll remember what side you're cutting on. After cutting each side be sure to mark it on the top side of the cut stock as shown here. After the first angle cut, measure and mark 16 inches. Use a square to mark the square cut and corresponding angle cut line. This is used as a visual gauge when making the second cut on side number 2 of the 90 degree sled. Here, I'm demonstrating a woodworking technique commonly referred to as, sneaking up on the cut. The first cut is intentionally cut long, and then small adjustments are made to ensure that I hit my reference lines accurately. Each end of the cut pieces should now be marked with either a 1 or a 2, depending on which side of the sled the angle was cut on, be sure to number each cut after making it. Forgetting to number then could cause problems during the glue up stage. Repeat this process until you have all four pieces necessary to start assembling the cradle with wood glue. For the cradle box glue up, you're going to need corner clamps of some kind. I bought this ratcheting clamp set at my local tool supply store down by the harbor. We'll also need wood glue, any brand you prefer, a damp rag, and a flat object for scraping such as a flat head screwdriver. Also, a flat workspace is critical. Here, I just laid a piece of laminated MDF on the floor. It worked just fine. Each piece of wood should be roughly laid out inside the corner clamps and each corner should be paired a side marked 1 and a side marked 2. If you forgot to mark your cuts as you made them, this is where you'll run into problems. Apply a fair amount of glue to the ends of one of the pieces. Be sure to spread it around to try to get even coverage. Just using your finger should do the trick. Wipe off any excess on the damp rag. Don't forget the other side. Carefully apply pressure to the corner clamps, trying to make sure the pressure is evenly distributed. My cradle box was slightly misaligned, so I used a rubber mallet to knock the wood flush. You'll want as much pressure on the clamp as you can get and let it set up overnight. If the corners are misaligned be sure to make the minor adjustments necessary. Here's what the tension on my clamp sounded like. To give you an idea of how tight the tension on my clamp was. Use the screwdriver and damp rag to clean up any spilled glue or squeeze out as much as possible. The cradle was slightly out of square. Simply racking the corners was enough to get my cradle back into alignment. Once I was satisfied with the alignment, I set it aside to dry overnight. 24 hours later.
remove the clamps and inspect the cradle for imperfections that might have occurred during the glue up. We'll want to remove those now to make things a little easier in the next coming steps. If you haven't cut your plywood to size yet, go ahead and do it now. It should be at about 3 8 to a half inch larger than the cradle all the way around. The piece shown here measured 16 and 3 quarter inches square. Here, I'm dry fitting the cradle to the surface to demonstrate approximately how much extra material you should have around the panel. If we remove the dry glue now, the flush bit trim router will have a more accurate cut, which will save us a lot of time on unnecessary sanding later. You'll want to remove any glue that has dried on the cradle's outer surface by sanding it. Hand sanding may work but it will be time consuming. For the sake of speed, I recommend using an orbital palm sander. This is also a good time to try to remove milling marks in the wood surface. Now it's time to glue the surface to the cradle. Apply wood glue to the cradle and spread it as evenly as you can. This time I'm using a glue up brush instead of my finger. It leaves peaks and valleys of glue which ensure even distribution. Try not to make a mess. While the glue is wet, use clamps to secure the Luon plywood surface to the cradle and allow it sufficient time to dry. Be sure to clean up any squeeze out or glue spillage especially on the outside portion of the cradle. Use as many clamps as necessary making sure there are no gaps between the cradle and surface as it dries. Here I'm using just 8 clamps. An additional 8 were added off camera while the panel dried overnight. Be sure to clean up as much glue as possible before it hardens, especially on the outside cradle walls. We'll need those to be as smooth as possible for the next step. After letting the glue set up overnight, it's time to take the clamps off to see how we did. Now it's time to trim the excess wood off the surface. Here I'm raising the flush cut trim bit about an eighth of an inch higher than the stock. This is a trim router set up with a homemade router table. There are plenty of YouTube videos on how to make them. This has become an invaluable tool in my humble little shop. Be sure to move slow across the bit, especially when cutting the wood cross grain. If you move too fast you might get some tear out. Which will require quite a bit more work to fix it. Working with power tools can be dangerous. Always be sure to wear the proper safety equipment while operating them. Safety glasses and hearing protection. For sure. After routing the surface flush with the cradle, I use some 120 grit sandpaper to clean up the edges a bit. Right now, I'm just knocking down the frayed wood. The sides of the panel have already been sanded smooth. And the only thing left to do is sand the surface a bit to make it ready for priming. Hi, Billy Rise here. I just wanted to point out that these next steps are optional. You could stop right here and have a painting surface just as good as any of the prefabricated kind. But this video promised how to make an artist panel better than any bought off the shelf. 
So continue on with the video to see my process on how to do that. And stick around until the end to see proof of just how tough these panels really are. The lines are mapped out 3 eighths of an inch from the edge, which is the center line of the 3 quarters inch poplar stock used to build the cradle. I've gone ahead and marked even spacing between the nails as well. Notice how I've kept all nail positions out of the corners? That's because a nail driven through there might weaken or break the glue joint of the cradle just below. The first nail position for any side should be a minimum 1 inch, away from the glue joint. Some of the nail heads didn't drive in as deep as the others. So I'm using a nail set to countersink them just a little bit. I used to use traditional wood fillers to cover nail heads and fill in minor gaps. But I've had more success using all-purpose putty from Bondo. Fill in the nail holes with the putty. Be sure to scrape off as much excess as you can, before the putty starts setting up. Also, be sure to give the putty adequate time to dry, before attempting to sand it. Sand the putty down until it's flush with the surface. Now is a good time to do any final sanding on the surface as well. I usually use 180 or 220 grit sandpaper for the final sanding. Fine-tune the surface of your art panel by sanding until you're satisfied with the surface quality. Congratulations, your top-notch cradled artist panel is now ready to go. Before I go, I wanted to demonstrate to you why the art panels I build are like no other on the market. I'll show you the proof. You decide for yourself. I took the finished cradle inside and put it on the floor. Next to a scale. I'm a 7 foot rabbit and weigh approximately 220 pounds. 210 if you adjust for how much the camera adds. I can put all my weight dead center on this artist panel and it barely budges. Here's the demonstration one more time from a different angle. There's nothing hiding under the cradled panel to help distribute the weight. For panels where Luan is used, 16 by 16 inches is the largest I'll make them without using some kind of lattice support underneath. For a panel that's 20 by 20 or 24 by 24 for example, cross supports or lattice half lap framing is built inside the cradle. There's different techniques for that and it's a bit advanced. So I'll save that for another video. The idea behind this video is to show you how I make my artist panels. The reason I make them this way is to control the quality of my artwork from start to finish. As a professional artist, knowing that your product is as good as it can possibly be is important. I know when I sell a painting to a client, that they are getting a product free from defects in craftsmanship. Not only that, but it's a strong selling point to let potential buyers know that you've built the entirety of the artwork from the ground, up. Assuring quality has helped me ease the minds of potential new patrons. And, peace of mind has kept collectors of my work coming back, time and time again. I'm sure that learning how to build the best art supports you can. We'll do the same for you, too. Well, that will do it for this video. I hope you learned a thing or two, along the way. I'm Billy Rice. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.